Hello, this is Marcelo Chermak and welcome to the simulation flow graph part of this webinar. Uh, let's start by talking why use the graphs. Uh, I think first is to create something unique that can't be done out of the box. What is the simulation flow graph? It's a series of nodes that controls all the information within RealFlow, or at least most of it. So let's keep in mind the concept of flow of information, like, we, like I said before. In this example today, I was asked to create an ocean in a circular shape. Immediately, I thought, you know, circular, liquid, falling, a circle, it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, but then, as I know more and more about the potential and the possibilities of the graph, I said, well, let's try with the graphs. The job will be released later this year, and I can't show you what was the final product, but I can show you the thought process behind it and how I developed uh, the concept. So I immediately came, I thought, well, we're going to need uh, to create some tests. Let's figure it out minus 90, a circle. I got a circle here, right? I got a circle, let's say 10. Uh, because I'm going to need to filter particles in, in objects. I'm going to have to have particles that it comes really close to objects, and uh, I'm going to have to uh, filter them out. And immediately, I thought, well, this cannot be achieved uh, within RealFlow because there's no way to filter particles based on a mesh of another object. So let's try to solve one problem at a time. And this first problem is how to filter particles coming by this object here. So let's hit F5. Make sure you guys know that there's nothing on the relationship editor connecting uh, the circle with the sphere. right? And um, if we play uh, simulate now, good. See, not interacting, not colliding, nothing's happening. Let's make this circle instead of liquid. Let's make it dumb particles that uh, makes it faster to simulate. So let's create another emitter because I'm going to have to take the particles out of this emitter and add to some, some other emitter. So let's make it a container make it also dumb particles. So now we have a circle, uh, we have a container, uh, we have where the particles are coming from and where they're going. So let's save this guy and let's create, let's open control F2 brings this simulation flow window. Let's make it bigger here so we can see something. Um, and let's hit on simulation uh, step post add graph so now we have a graph that we're going to build here so we need first of all we need to get the information like i said the flow of information uh from the circle and we need to get the information of this container and the information from this sphere so how do we call all that here at first it sounds very daunting a daunting task to go through this tab but as you get used to this and you know more and more you kind of have an idea what you want. So in this case, I need a standard emitter. Circle three is a standard emitter. So let's say if I type here, get standard emitter. So there we go. I just type get STA. So the options are a standard emitter or a string. So if I put A there is a standard emitter. So there we go. I got a standard emitter here. If I right click, on the the box of the name box i'm gonna type uh the name of that standard emitter so circle zero three right good you can also right click on the object name and say copy name we're gonna try that again so there we go so we have a standard emitter and what do we need from that emitter do we need its position no we need its particles so we hit tab again and then we see particle down here and from the particle menu you have get particles let's see uh, particle uh get particles there we go 
So we're going to get the information from that emitter is the particles that we want. So we connect that node with this other node. So out of these particles, we need two things, or actually we need a few things. The first thing will be uh, some channels, some informations about those particles, all right? So we're going to hit tab again, and we're going to say uh, particle get channel. Where is it? Particle get channel down here, okay? Particle channel. So now we can duplicate that, control copy and control V. We're going to need three channels, control because we're going to need position, velocity, and the ID. So uh, position and velocity, uh, you can imagine why, um, because we need to know where the part, you know, what velocity the particles have and uh, which, where they are, the position of uh, them, so they can be removed from one uh, system to another. And then we need the ID to know uh, which one we're going to be removing from uh, uh from one system to another so let's put it here uh position so we just type the name of the channel there and then you say velocity and then the next one is id All right so we have this three so we get those particles and we feed those particles information uh through this all of them, particle, particle, and particle. So now we have the vel position, velocity, and ID. We got all that information. So just if you look back, we got a standard emitter. From that emitter, we got the particles from that emitter. And then we got position, velocity, and ID. So we have all this information so far. So what do we need? What else do we need for this scene? We need to get information about the sphere, right? Because that sphere is uh, will be the object that we will filter by. So let's tab again, and let's say uh, we need get object. So let's say get object. Object. There we go. We have. Uh, we're gonna need. To, the object itself. So the name of the object uh, will be sphere three. Sphere O3. Or let's delete this and let's go to that sphere and let's right click and say copy name. And then we come here and then we right click and say paste. So we know for a fact that we are not misspelling or there's any any problems with that. So what do we need from this object? Again, the same thinking uh, process. We're going to say, I need the mesh of that object. So get object. And the next, the, the next option is get object mesh. There we go. Node. So we got the mesh of that object. And now we need to translate that mesh um, this to a piece of information that we can use. So uh, let's say the object mesh, object mesh. There we go. If we go all the way in the bottom, object mesh, uh, we can see here we get object mesh to mesh. So hit, and then we can connect the mesh to the object mesh. Right. So around this object, we're going to need to create a field. And this field uh, has to represent the distance. Actually, I need the information, the distance information from that field. So let's see uh, if we hit tab again, distance, uh, field distance, field distance create from mesh. There we go. So we connect the mesh to the mesh have that information and we need a sample from uh, that field so we're gonna hit um, let's say field sample field sample there we go we can get 
the field itself information and the position of those particles. So we go back to the channel here. The first one is uh, the position. So if we minimize this a little more, let's make this a little bigger. And let's arrange, let's organize this to, like, to make it a little better. So we got position. See, as uh, it's the only thing that comes up here. See if the other one, yep. But this one has the position information. So we bring that in. Uh, position. So it's connecting the position. Uh, and then we need to compare uh, based on something. And it's going to be based on a condition. So let's see. Let's hit tab. And let's see if we can get a condition. Let's see the third one down here is condition. So uh, I need something that is lesser than anything that goes around that sphere and is lesser than a certain number will be selected. So let's see condition by lesser than. There we go. The first one or this fifth one down. So I get that sample and I make that uh, value, the value zero. And we're going to have to compare that to something, to a number. So I think it should be very close to that sphere. So let's hit tab again. And uh, let's put a real number there, which is we if we hit real, uh, the first one up there now, real. So that's a number I'm going to put, because I want it inside of it. So I'm going to put a negative number, minus 0.01. So anything that comes close to uh, that distance, and that's going to be the second value that this node will evaluate. The node evaluate the we have the position of those particles in in relation to the this object, and if it comes to a real the real number of minus 0.01, it will be selected. So now we need to create a place where we're going to store all that information. Let's move back a little bit. So we want to array num our, our array uh, mask. Let's see. Array, array, array. We have a lot of arrays. So num filter, it's already much less. So we want to filter mask. So we want to store the information based on the position, velocity, and ID, right? So we're going to control copy this V, put it on underneath here, and let's V again and put, a, put over here. So what do we need now? is to get that mask information that we have already, this comparison here. And we're going to attach mask to mask. That is what we're going to be filtering by. And what are we going to be filtering by? We're going to be filtering by based on a few information. One is the position. We're going to position there. We're going to do the velocity in this one. And we're going to do the ID in the last one here. So now it's getting a little more complicated, right? So uh, let's use uh, let's use a, a pass. If you hit here, pass. Pass has the only utility to organize our uh, masks here or organize our uh, stuff. So we will pass the information through it. We will not do anything about it. So I'm just going to put it down here so it become a little more uh, cleaner. So the ID is, is down here. So uh, you can see a more cleaner graph here. So now, now that we have that information, we need to transfer those particles somewhere else, right? So we're going to start kind of everything we did again. Do you guys have an idea now what I'm going? Uh, so we need another standard emitter. So hit tab. Say this time I'm going to say standard. Uh, say get standard emitter. Get another emitter. 
and we're gonna uh, go there to the container we're gonna get copy that name and we're gonna go here and paste that name control container 2 right so we need from those emitters what do we need we need the uh, particles from that emitter right so let's hit tab again and uh, in this tab we're gonna uh, get the particles let's go into particles again uh, get particles there we go so we connect those guys uh, we got those particles and we need to add those particles uh, we need to add to this particle so let's see go to the particles again and see if there's something we can add with so particle add there we go uh we we're gonna do here we're gonna add particles to particles and then we need to get the velocity information and we need to get uh the position so which one was the velocity information again so there we go uh position you know you can change the name of uh uh your node so you it, it's easier for you so let's change the name of this particle to get channel we're gonna say like i said here this is the position so part rename node so we're gonna say position uh let's uh, delete that all delete everything uh let's delete everything there so let's say particle underscore position so we know what is what this one is velocity we're gonna uh, right click and say rename node and we're gonna go re delete most of this stuff and we're gonna say particle uh, velocity and then the third one we do the same thing again and then we're gonna say the particle underscore id all right so now we have an idea what is uh, which node is doing. So it's easier for us to connect later. So we need to, the, to add those particles, I need the position and velocity. So there we go. I get position, connect to position, and it will give me an option. If it's too close to figure out where I'm dropping, it will, it will bring this window up and I'm going to say particle position. And then I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to get, that node again and, and hit velocity there's only one available right so but also i need to remove those particles uh that are not part of my uh filter right so be, otherwise i'm going to have duplicates of those particles so let's find uh let's go back to the particle again particle remove uh remove but all no i don't want to remove all so particle remove by id let's go that's the and i have to remember that i have already the id information so i'm gonna get those particles the initial particles which particles i have to remove is the ones with the id right so i'm gonna do i'm gonna create another pass let's see pass just to organize this a little better put it up here and then I'm going to get that particle information into the pass. And then I'm going to pass through and I'm going to come here to those particles, right? Up, oh, didn't connect. Uh, make it up here. And there we go. Particles. Now, what I need to do is which, which one is it? It's the ID that we need, right? So I'm going to get particle ID that I already renamed here. And I'm going to connect there. There we go so it's a little more organized uh we can also add another pass here just to uh organize them better so let's delete this guy uh, control this control copy control v uh control uh, command v there we go let's, uh, let's get that particle id and then let's go through that and let's bring it over here so we kind of have a little more organized here so we're removing those guys 
And now what I need to do, I need to evaluate these guys, right? So let's see, let's create an evaluate node. Oh, we, we're missing a, a few things that are not uh, added here. I think I connected uh, some wrong stuff here. Yeah, I don't think this is correct. So let's take this out. I don't think that's, we need, We don't need the original particle information from here, but it was good that we renamed. Let's undo this. So we have to see from the, where I'm, I'm storing all this information here. So this one comes from the position. So I'm gonna get that information into the position. There we go. And this one, I'm going to the velocity, which is the second one, right? So it's good. So now it's correct and now it will be uh, working. So I need to evaluate this system here. There we go. So let's hit tab again and let's do evaluate, which is the first one, evaluator. So I can connect first, I need to remove the particles right and then i'm gonna need another pin add another pin here so we're gonna get the out particles from the particles add and we're gonna evaluate this guy so let's now uh test this out let's see what uh let's save this guy so let's give a, let's go back a little bit and put some notes here before we evaluate this guy to see what uh uh we need so let's uh create some notes uh add new note so this note we're gonna put around this guy here uh just make this uh note here let's get this guys over I'll make it a little more organized so let's make it neater and we so if we're passing this information to someone else to a junior artist or to someone else we can uh, uh add notes so we know what it, you know how what was the thought process behind it so this one i'm getting the particles get it get particles uh get particles let's see if i can particles uh information and then between parentheses i'm gonna say uh position position velocity and id okay so there it's enough information here we're gonna create another node and then we're gonna put here, create another node around this guy. Uh, and say, right? Let's make it smaller. And then we're gonna type it in on the top box here. We're gonna say, get object information. Information. And then we can put a third one. Let's uh, small one here, another node here. And we're gonna say for this guys, this is creating the field. Uh, okay, field creation, field creation here and condition. that is creates the field and the condition and then this guy here uh we're gonna put another one and we're gonna add another note uh and we're gonna say that this guys are uh, let's say tap stored filtered uh filter right? particles so we're storing uh, uh, 
So to make it a little more um, understanding, so let's make this, uh, we can edit this. Uh, oops, uh, let's bring this up again. Let's start editing the color uh, of this background just to make a differentiation here. You don't have to, but uh, uh, let's see, this node, edit, select background color. Let's do whatever background color, this one, let's make it gray or you can make it whatever color you like. This one, we can leave green and uh, the condition itself, we're gonna make it, uh, Make this condition like uh, brighter green, maybe. You know, and uh, this one we can make it blue. You know. So there we go. So we are uh, separating them, and we're, let's evaluate now. Let's save this guy again, and let's evaluate our what 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 we have so far. So, if we hit simulate, okay, why there's no particles here? Um, circle three, dumb particles. Are they visible? They are visible. So, for some reason, they all being removed right away. Let's reset this and let's figure out why they're being removed. Everything seems to be working here correctly, but if you, they're not being filtered. So what do we need to do is to control uh, F2, go to the simulation flow window again, and let's see why there's something on the graph that uh, it's not right, it's not working. So I, if I look at this, so we're, so the particles are being removed before they do anything to them. So why is that? So let's see where those particles, again, simulation uh, flow is the flow of information. So where is the particles coming from? Let's see. Uh, they're coming, it seems they're coming from the right place. Get particles, particles ID. Oh, there is a, that's an interesting point that is good. So those particles, the information from the particle are coming straight to be removed instead of going down the graph and being removed based on ID after they are filtered, after the condition is established. So let's un, uh, take this out, take uh, this guy out, right? And let's delete this guy, we don't need that. So the particles need to be removed by id after they are filtered well the field they pass by the field and they are stored so let's move this guy over here and get the information on the particle id from here there we go so now they are uh the particle id it's coming from after the uh it goes through the mesh uh, you know the condition is satisfied and they are stored so that information then uh comes to the the particle id removal tool or a node so if we, re if we save this and reset and if we play back again there we go particles are here and particles the container are here so if we make this a little wider Let's make this uh, a matter a little like this. Let's put it like that. And, or let's go to the other side, actually. Cool. So, um, for playback, let's make a different colors for those. Circle three is gonna be red particles and container is gonna be blue particles. There we go. And reset and go. There we go. Red particles come in as they go through the distance. Remember the distance. 
minus 0 0.01, uh, which is the inside, is 0.1 uh, minus 0 0.01 units of the inside of the sphere, right? They become uh, part of that container, the blue particles. There we go. Highlight them. Don't highlight them. So that's cool, right? So uh, that's the first part of our problem. We can filter those particles based on uh, this condition being closeness of this mesh. Whatever is closer to the mesh, it will be removed. Cool. So we go back to the, our graph node and then I need the second problem that I have is to create a circle. So I can use some demons here now. Oh, let's go quickly take a look on uh, F5, the relationship editor. All these are not, uh, has no relation to each other. So just to make sure that you, you can visualize that all this is being done by the graph itself. Let's close this, minimize this guy. Actually, no, let's open this guy and say, okay, I need some, uh, I could put some demons here, some forces to make uh, the particles to spin. So my options would be uh, to use maybe, let's say some, uh, let's see my options with, within the program itself. I could use some vortex, I could use some uh, Coriolis force, which is down here, um, but uh, Coriolis force, but it's uh, based on my experience that doesn't work quite well. So what I need to do is I need to create some rotation on those particles, at least uh, in one of the particles. So what should I do? I should get I should get the particle channel from uh, the container. Let's get particle channel. Particle, go back to particle again down here. Particle, get particle channel. So we get the particle ch information there. Let's put it over here. Let's put a note here. Let's add a note and make this note uh, orange. Why not orange? So let's uh, put this guy underneath here. And I'm going to type this rotation rotation and parentheses we put particles particle rotation okay so there we go um so in this case we're gonna need to we got the channel and what channel is that we need to get a uh, position right position um yeah, I think I need a position and then I need to set uh, that channel and uh, what channel I'm, let's see, position and to that position, I need to add some rotation and uh, let's say particle down here again, particle set channel. There we go. Particle set channel. But before we set that channel, we need to change those particles, right? We got those particles information and we need to change that to something else. So we need to add rotation. If we hit tab and we type rotation. So our uh, possibility image rotate, that's not it. Image rotate free, not it. Uh, matrix for create rotation or matrix to, for create rotation Euler. And I would say that is the first one, or yeah, the first one, matrix for create rotation. There we go. And uh, we got that information from the create rotation not here. So uh, let's see, how do I get? I need to get that information, the matrix information. So I need to combine this two. I need to get this position and multiply by this. How do I do that? So let's get a math uh, equation. So hit tab, math, and let's say multiply. 
So, so now I'm going to multiply two, inf two pieces of information. One is the channel, the position of those particles. That will be uh, the zero information. And then I have to multiply that by uh, the rotation number itself. Right? So in this case, let's uh, degree of, let's say, five degrees. There we go. So each particle will be uh, placed under uh, this new vector, 0, 1, and 0. But we will also uh, change in a degree of uh, 5 degrees. So that final number is the new information that I'm going to put on the set channel value, right? So uh, the particle, so to set the channel, we need to set the channel also based on this particles, the container particles. So we now we got those particles, we got that information from the particle here, where it's highlighted. We got the position information, and now we're getting the same particles and we are setting um, the same, uh, we're setting based on this multiplication of this position and plus some rotation and new this new vector, and we're gonna add this. So here we go. Let's add one more pin to this guy, and the order uh, is very important. So first we need to uh, add the particles to that another one. Then we need to remove it. And then after we remove and we add the other particle, then we need to multiply. So the add, the order of evaluation here is very good. It's very important. First, we are removing the particles, which is on top here. Uh, we we're adding the particles, I mean, to this emitter. Second, we are uh, removing those particles. And then we're multiplying. So let's uh, rewind this guy. Remember, the blue is the container. So we start our simulation again. And nothing's happening. So let's figure out why nothing is happening here. Let's, go, let's bring it back to the window, simulation flow. And there's no rotation happening. Let's see. Let's open this guy and uh, let's see why it's not. Oh, there we go. There is an information. There's a warning sign here, this little triangle, if we zoom in a little more so you can see. There is a warning sign saying that the channel that we want to set was not defined. You know, duh, yeah, I'm going to need to define this channel, which is position, to be able to do that. So to be able to set that position channel in. So now we minimize that again and uh, reset this guy. And then we, there we go. As soon as the particles start getting here, they start creating a perfect circle. There we go. Great. Good. So then we have a la last problem on this uh, equation here to solve. We need to create an ocean. And with this little amount of particles here, we're not going to be able to create an ocean, right? Yes. So what do we need to do is now that we solve all the most of the problems that we're going to have, uh, you know, obviously we're going to need a little more embellishment on this thing. We need to do now is to, now that we have that container and that grid, what we can do now is to reset this guy, make this guy's not, um, let's click here the icon, we're not simulating, we're not simulating this guy, let's make them invisible so they get out of the way. And what we need to do now is to use hybrido. All right, so let's create a sphere, or not a sphere, a cube, which is going to be our emitter, which is, with hybrido, I'm going to be able to create 
much more particles, uh, many more particles, and we'll be able to create an ocean, right? So let's put this container here, or not a container, the square this cube here. Let's make it a little wider. And now I need to make this an emitter. Let's click emitter. Immediately it's emitter. Let's see where this emitter is pointing. It is pointing down, but I need it to point forward. Let's make it a stream, yes. And let's make an initial speed of... Let's see, what was the speed that I had with the circle? I had a speed of 2. Cool. Maybe a speed of 2 will be good. Let's make an initial speed of 2. Cool. All right. So now we need to create a domain. First domain. Let's make this domain... Um, red and let's make another domain uh, where's my domains another domain and make that domain blue cool so now if i hit simulate nothing is happening why nothing is happening i oh if I hit F5, then my relationship editor, nothing is connected, right? So let's take the sphere out of the way, uh, not the sphere, but uh, the circle and the container, we're not using them anymore. So we have domain one, domain two. We have the emitter that is not connected to any of them. And uh, so we need to connect the emitter to the domain one cool so now the, the emit is there so there we go again nothing's happening they are not colliding this sphere is not colliding it's not uh, uh associated with that let's make it as emit let's make this domains both domains let's make them one so it's a faster <clears throat> interaction, All right? So we can uh, separate them, put them in different space. One is red, one is blue. All right, so uh, if we hit simulate again, there we go. The, it's going a little faster, All right? but nothing's happening. So let's go back to our graph control f2 so if we go back here if i look back in my graph let's maximize this guy if i go back here i have a standard emitter and i can't use that standard emitter for the particles and i have a standard emitter for the other one i cannot use that wood hybrido it will not take that hybrid information so if i hit tab and i hit hybrido we have a lot of options here. So we need get uh, hybrido, get all hybrido? No, I need it to differentiate between one and the other. So I need get hybrido domain. So I got a hybrido domain. And uh, let's remove this guy, the standard emitter. Let's connect the hybrido domain. Now that all our tests are done, we did that with dumb particles really quickly simulation now we know this is working we can uh bring the hybrid domain here um and let's get the first name copy name let's go back to this uh my guy here and let's tie let's paste that hybrid domain one so i need another one let's uh control copy and control v here there we go and we're going to replace the other guy also as you can see this is very quickly now that we did everything in sph uh standard emitter uh, this guy is gonna be well, all we need to do is to hybrid domain two and we're very close to the end of our our uh demonstration here so we reset this guy 
So now all we have to do is save and let's simulate this guy. There we go. The action could not be completed because of a memory problem. Let's see. Let's make this. Uh, let's see why it's not. Uh, why there's a memory problem here. Uh, let's save this guy and figure it out. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I just had to reset. I have to reset. Let's re try again because sometimes it, it tells me that there's no memory, but uh, it, it just uh, it gags a little bit. Well, let's uh, reset this and uh, simulate again. There you go. The red emitter is being uh, is going through the sphere, and the other one is creating the Let's make this. Um, let's make this sphere a little bigger, so everything. All right, everything, all the particles there. Simulator. There we go. All the particles, all that emitters, are, they're going through here. Are being created and is. Uh, they're being removed and passed on to another one. All right, so let's see one, one more thing that we can do to, to make this a little more natural. Let's start adding stuff to the scene. Let's make a plane and um, let's make this plane rotate a little bit this way and this way. And let's make this plane move over, uh, not there. So make move it over here on its on the path of that circle, All right? And um, let's rotate a little bit this way, so it the the liquid will rotate. So if we go to F5 again, now we know that there's nothing being. Uh, if we maximize, make it a little open. So we want uh, the domain two particles to connect to hit this plane. Let's connect that, close, simulate again. There we go. It's colliding with that a really far distance, but the liquid looks a little better. It looks like more flat and it's creating like at least for me, a base of my ocean, right? So I can get these other particles and put on top or put underneath or change this position. So now they are colliding. If we make it as a two domain, the default uh, size, uh, which is 0.3, I made a cell size of this two domains one. Let's make it as 0.3, which is default again. And I will simulate again the little you know, slower, but we can see clearly that uh, it's getting somewhere. The more particles I'll put on this, the more uh, the bottom of the ocean I can create. I can put other objects here to splash around. So as you can see, I'm going to let the simulation while I'll give you the last uh, pieces of uh, information. So control F2 uh, to bring my, uh, let's close, stop this for a second, bring my panel here. So as you saw, I created a flow of information that got all the items on this screen and I test them really quickly with a uh, dumb uh, SPH standard emitter. And then in the end, I'm, now that everything is tested, I can uh, change to a, hybrid domains and get those particles too. So I can duplicate this, create uh, uh, other trees of information and start uh, separating all those particles based on objects, based on collision, based on position, and then, then start adding uh, different effects to each part of that uh, uh, three or at each part of this separated particles.
So this is uh, very interesting. This file will be online uh, together with this explanation. So you guys can explore further. You can uh, uh, see how that work. But uh, let me close this down and uh, simulate this again. And uh, as you can see, uh, you know, the, those two guys are not, you know, colliding with each other. Um, we can uh, reset this guy and go back to F5. I don't need them to collide with each other now, but I can't um, just see domain one colliding with domain two. It's not possible because the two domains cannot be uh, interacting with each other, which is interesting. So we close this and if we simulate again, there we go. So I think you, uh, I gave you an idea on how to explore the possibilities of the nodes. And in, in my case here for my project, I had to duplicate this uh, a few times and create uh, a few versions so I could create more interesting splashes and I put objects around the circle. Um, uh, you know, the possibilities are endless when you think of of this system as a you know flow of information and be able to dive in into all the possibilities of a real flow so with that i'll leave you uh with this file and uh, you can explore further have a good week and i'll talk to you guys later hopefully